Hey everyone, I'm Hashem, you're watching Pushing Film. Welcome back. There's been a bit of an absence and if you've been following the channel, you know that it's because I've been away on holiday for just over a month and recently got back, which means I have a lot of film to develop. And I thought I'd make this video to share something that I find quite exciting with you. And that is this space here in Melbourne called Open Lab. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know I might have shared a little bit about them in the past and they are actually a self-service film lab where you can develop and scan your own film and they run workshops and they open during the midst of COVID. So I haven't had a chance to visit them since they've been open for the last year or so. And I thought what better chance than now to take some of this film that I've accumulated. I've been developing all my own black and white, but I thought with about 20 something rolls of C41, maybe I'll take it over there, check things out and present a little video for you to find out more about this great new space here in Melbourne. So I hope you enjoy this video and I'll catch up with you over there. I came in and had a coffee with Alex, the founder of Open Lab, who gave me some of the background and an introduction to the space, which I then came in to use over the next days to develop and scan my film. And although I got to meet him briefly, I unfortunately didn't get to interview Gavin, one of the other integral members of the team, but I'll hopefully include him in some future content. Hey, I'm here with Alex, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about Open Lab and how it all started? So I started shooting film when I was Oh, like nine or ten years old, found my late uncle's OM1 under the house and was really like just enthralled by it and sort of it just started this journey of, of, of being obsessed with film and I started at high school, I like lived in the dark room and I've just sort of been shooting my whole life. I went digital for, for a period of time and, and yeah, when I went back to uni, uh, started developing my own film uh, again and um, found that there was a real hunger from people at university to come and use the equipment. To, to sort of develop their own film as well. And so that sort of was what spawned the idea behind Open Lab. Yep. Was it a, an extension of your own desire to kind of tinker and do everything yourself as well? Yeah, and you, for you sure. found that with, with other people? Yeah, yeah. I think I, th I, I became really, um, I realized how much that side of the process I missed. When I re engaged with film, it was that post processing part that I, well, post shooting part that I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, awesome. So you got started, you had a slow start sort of during COVID and then have been up and running properly for about a year now. And from what I've seen in the last couple of days that I've come in to scan my own film, it's, it's an awesome space. It's really something that uh, even took me by surprise, even though I knew what it was. When I got in and came and saw the place, used the equipment and felt that sense of community that you've really built and all the way everyone kind of interacts. We've got, you know, Damon behind the camera and I've met great people already. Uh, I think you've, you've built something really unique like you've wanted to do, but. That's so good to hear. Yeah, I mean, where, awesome. where's it going next? And what would you say to people um, who haven't been to Open Lab yet? I would say that, try it out. Film processing from the outside looking in, I think appears quite inaccessible and, and sort of like a really steep learning curve, but with the right equipment, you know yourself, it's, it's a lot easier than I think people realize and the benefits of doing your own processing, uh, uh, I've found that I've, I've really engaged with film in an entirely new way by um, spending a lot of time in the lab versus dropping my film off at a lab to have it processed for me. The control with scanning is, is, um, is huge and you realize when you have that control. And it isn't until you sort of have that experience, and I think you've sort of had that in the last mm -hmm. couple of days, and it's great to hear that you enjoyed it because I think that's, that's why I would encourage you to come in and give it a go because it's not until you sort of have that level of control that you realize that you sort of want it and, and how much it adds to, the, to your overall practice. Hi, tell us a bit about yourself and what you're doing here today. Hey, my name's Lucy um, and I'm here at Open Lab, one of the best labs in Melbourne. And I just did some E6 processing and I'm going to do some more C41 and try out some black and white as well because, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. What, what is the most attractive element uh, within that? Is it the fact that you have control over everything or is it the curiosity and the, the fun of it all? Well, I think it's both. Like, I'm very curious about how it all works because it's just a complete mess, mystery when you send film to a lab, but when you're here, you're actually understanding how the whole process works, and yeah, you really just get to see the images appear in front of your eyes. Scanning up some portrait from the Nikon um, from ages ago, getting through my backlog and just crunching through everything I've got to do. Yeah, got, got uh, a lot to get through. Oh, so much, so, so much. I always like sit on a bunch of it, and then wait and wait and wait, and then I just come here and just go through all of it in like an hour. It's, uh, it's not just like an efficient thing, it's I really enjoy the community you get out of it. Yeah. Just meeting all the new people and, and just, you know, just enjoying the space. It's a beautiful place to be. Cool. 
Cool, so we're on the Frontier SP3000 about to scan a roll of uh, Kodak Gold 200. And just kind of showing you a little bit of the process here. First, you start off by aligning the frame, and I'm sure if you come in, you'll get to learn a lot of this process yourself. But the fun part of it is once you actually feed the film in and get to do the creative uh, process of adjusting your colors and density to how you like it. And the great thing is you have all those controls. So for example, this frame, I am going to add uh, at least three density and then take some of that red out by adding cyan just to kind of get it to where I want it. I can go further and play with the yellow blue balance, but I think that's enough as a start as not to take too long. Just press enter and move on to the next frame. And that's the beauty of using uh, something like the Frontier to scan your own film is that you can get the film exactly how you want it to your taste. For example, you might not want uh, as much blue as I do. You might like a darker image or a brighter, more pastel one. So you have all those controls right there to get it exactly how you want. Having the control uh, with like pushing and pulling, it does sort of impact creative decisions you make in camera when you're shooting, having that control yeah. in post. So For sure. there's a lot of benefits to it. Yeah, the process doesn't end with, with shooting. It's the developing and the For sure. scanning and even printing ideally if you want to do a bit of that. Awesome, so thanks for giving us a bit of the background on Open Lab there. Good and life. what I'd probably want to hear next, and I'm sure the audience is, what do you have coming up soon and any changes or anything exciting that you want to let everyone know about? Um, so at the moment, um, we've sort of divided the membership model up into two, uh, two membership types. So there's basic or casual, and then there's advanced. Um, and casual sort of people that want to use the Fuji the Mini Lab because it's, a lot of it's automated. Same with the scanners, they're sort of, they're quite easy to introduce you to. And, and then the advanced stuff has been like all under one, um, one sort of big four hour marathon workshop where we try to go over everything else. And it's, we've sort of realized now that we're gonna divide things up into specific workshops, so black and white, slide film, etc., and um, enable people to tailor their open lab experience to their own practice and, mm -hmm. and um, sort of deep dive into parts they want. Maybe there are other parts they're not as interested in and but maybe they will be down the track and the options are always there. But I think we're gonna make people, make open lab a bit more, um, focus on the workshops and sort of yeah. uh, spending more time with um, specific parts of the process, whether that's sure. sheet film, etc. Why would you not want to be here? <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. Um, yeah, you just, the people here are always great, like just such great service and help. And yeah, it's just a great way to understand more about what you're shooting. There's always great vibe in here. And up just hanging out with Alex and whoever else is Devlin scanning here. What's your favorite thing about Open Lab? Um, I would say the community uh, more than anything. Like there's nothing stopping anyone from taking it to a commercial lab getting everything done within an amount of time, but the fact that you get to interface with other film shooters, which is something that I feel lacks a little bit within the whole uh, original business model, this uh, kind of totally revolutionizes that. When Open Lab first started, we attracted lots of um, a really keen enthusiasts that have been shooting for quite a while. Um, we didn't have the, the auto processes, so everything was done sort of with a semi-auto process. And so um, there was a little bit of a learning curve involved, but now with the Fuji Mini Lab, you can walk in and we can show you how to process your own color film in a matter of minutes. Um, same with the scanning. Um, so what we're trying to do moving forward is really um, open up the lab to not just uh, not to just appeal to people that have been shooting for a while, but people that are just getting into shooting film or maybe have sort of been doing it for a, a short period of time and feel some hesitation, hesitation in, in engaging with um, any sort of post-processing stuff. But um, yeah, it, it's just if you come in and sort of and sort of give it a go, I think you'll you'll sort of be quite surprised at how accessible um, the process is. I think so. I yeah. think people would. And uh, yeah, if you've just come back from holiday like I did, save up some rolls even if you're just shooting casually and then come and see how you like the process. Maybe you won't, maybe you will, and you can keep coming here uh, however casually you want to do that. So yeah, thanks for having awesome. a chat, man. No and worries. It's been a pleasure to have you in the lab. No worries. Come to Open Lab and check it out. Whether you're in Melbourne or you're visiting, highly recommend it. All right, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that introductory video on Open Lab, somewhere that I once again recommend visiting if you are here in Melbourne or if you're planning on dropping in. 
I want to thank Gavin and Alex once again for having me and giving me a rundown and letting me scan all the color film that you would have seen in some of the vlogs that I've already launched from my recent travels and some of the future vlogs that are yet to come from that same batch of photography done during those travels. So I also hope to do some future content at Open Lab, maybe more on the technical level, comparing things to do with different scanners, for example. Let me know what you'd like to hear, if there's any suggestions, and we'll definitely try and get Gavin on board and talk a little bit more about the technical side of development and scanning or certain parts of the process. So once again, feel free to drop your suggestions in the comments. So thanks for watching another Pushing Film video. Make sure you check out all the links in the description to see how you can support the channel and the work that I do here. And I'll see you next time.